Hi, I'm Bruce Asher. And in this video, I'm going to look at automation in Cubase. Now, automation is quite interesting. In the same way that MIDI events control instruments or external MIDI gear and tell them what to do, which is kind of distinct from audio, which is actually an audio recording, automation controls elements of the mixer and it allows you to change things over time. So for example, you might want to change the level of something over time, and that's, that's where you'd use automation. You might want to change some effects and how they work on a particular audio track or a channel over time, and that's where you'd also use automation. So we're now going to look at automation in the project window and in the mixer. So here we have uh, three audio loops, and these are set up as audio channels. And you can see also that they will appear in the Mix Console window. And in a way that is different from MIDI, where MIDI would press record, and this is something that's worth really focusing on, when you're recording audio, you're recording MIDI, you use the record controls. So they're based in this sort of transport bar, and you literally press record in the same way that you might do with a sort of tape machine. Um, or if you're recording voice memos on your phone or something like that, you press the record button. Automation doesn't use that functionality. It's not recording in the same way. In fact, it's almost like a separate record engine. It sits separate to everything else. So, well, let's look at how that actually works. And in fact, we have a bunch of their own dedicated record and playback buttons. In fact, in this case, they're reading and writing, which is slightly confusing. And you can see here, we have this W for write automation and a R for read automation. So just make sure you're, you, you understand that the R in this case doesn't mean record, it means to read it back. Um, and this goes back really to the days of um, sort of the late 70s, early 80s, particularly in the 1980s, where mixers incorporated automation. The idea with automation really is that it means that you can make mixes far more complicated. Before automation existed, you had to um, actually, on a mixing desk, get a whole bunch of people to move faders and change things around. So here what we're going to do is actually do the same thing but using automation. In other words, we're going to get the computer to remember what we've done. So we're now back on the project page. I'm playing the loop. And I'm going to dive back into the mixer. And I'm going to try and use automation to change the level of some of these channels. Now, automation will apply to one particular parameter. And uh, if I show you on the project page, let's look at this. We think we've got this loop going from one to nine. I'm going to take loop mode off. So when I play, it will play through and then it'll end. So we get, then we can be clear about where we are in the actual project. And what I'm going to do is actually stick in this project page. I'm going to press right automation, this track is selected, I'm pressing right, and I'm going to press play. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start moving the fader. I'm going to push it back up again, and then down to nothing, and then a quick change, and then down again, and then up, and then stop. And you'll see what happens here. Now it still keeps, it's still in write mode, but it's added this little R button, the green, but the green light. That R button is now lit up, which means it's now going to write the autom, it's going to read the automation. So I go back to the beginning, and I press play. Keep an eye on the fader here, and also have a look at these points here. And you can see how the fader is going down, moving back up. Now the thing to be careful of is I could make further changes here. I'm going to stop and it will actually overwrite the data that's already there. Now in this case there wasn't much going on but it's, it will overwrite whatever's there. In this mode, this touch mode, this is probably the most, the most the easiest way to actually use automation. When you touch a, a, a parameter, in this case a fader, it will write the automation. As soon as you stop, stop touching it, stop moving it, it will then stop doing that and it will go back to the existing values. Now, make sure you turn off that write automation because it's very easy, if you have that enabled on one or more channels and you start going and start mixing the track and you start moving the faders, if it's in write mode, it's going to keep writing that automation. 
And if you do it in a loop, you'll keep overwriting it with different values. So you've got to be very, very careful. And it's actually very easy to sometimes lose track of that. I've certainly done that when you actually suddenly find you're in write mode and you're overwriting um, elements of a mix. But what this means is it means whenever I play back this chunk of the track, it will do those things that I did with the fader there. And what's interesting is that these points actually can be edited. So I can actually grab one of these little, little uh, squares and I can move them around. And the same rules apply in terms of snap, of conforming to the grid. And often with automation, you find that perhaps the grid is a little bit too coarse. So I turn off this snap and then, can, then I can freely move it around. You can do other things where you can actually change the curves to get rounded curves as well. I can move that around. I can also select them and press delete and actually take those points out. And notice when I take that out, it then it, it removes that value there and it automatically means that if I drop that out, it'll go to the last value, which will be that one for the rest of the, the remaining track. I can also do things where I can actually select automation and I can move it around. Or I can select it and this time I'm going to put snap back on. I'm going to snap to, keep it snapped to bar. I choose a whole bar here and actually if I press Alt and Copy, I can actually copy it over and it will paste over the original values there. So the data itself is quite, it's quite similar to manipulating uh, MIDI controller data in terms of the way in which it works. You've got these series of points and you can play around and actually sort of move, move things around. Uh, and it means I can automate volume. Now actually it can be far more complicated than that because I can do other things. I can actually automate other types of other elements of the mixer. So if I dip back into the mixer here, and you will see that if I, I can actually automate um, a filter. So on, this, on these drums, let's try it on the kalimba in fact. So let's have a listen to this. I'll go back into loop mode as well. Let's play. Now I'm just gonna test it out to see what I want to do. I wanna have a... I want a low pass filter. So basically passing those low frequencies and I want to open that slowly as the track continues. I'm going to press right here. I'm then going to press play. And I'm going to slowly drag that out. I did a little bit too fast. So actually what I'm going to do, and make sure I turn right automation off. I'm going to go back into the project window. And you can see here that it's added this little element here. And in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it a really nice, just long, Op filter opening effect. I'm snapped to the grid. I'm going to move, I'm going to change the tool back to this pointer tool. I'm going to choose that. I'm going to delete that point there. And I'm going to move this one over so it takes three bars, oh no, seven bars to actually open. And you can hear it slowly opening. So the automation working on the core elements of the mixer, I can choose to have the fader, I can do it with panning, I can also do it with uh, this, this, the, uh, these filters, which are part of actually the, the, the built-in EQ and Cubase. Um, but equally, I can do things where I can actually automate insert effects. So for example, I could choose a delay, or I could choose the filter, filter plugin on the insert, I could choose um, a reverb, or I could choose a modulation effect, all kinds of other effects. I actually can automate all of the parameters in those effects. So if I wanted to change reverb time or delay time or all kinds of other different things, I could actually do that within the plugin. Not only plugins that come with Cubase, but also third-party plugins. So you can automate all of those different elements. In fact, it goes even further, because if I had an instrument um, set up in Cubase, I can actually automate the parameters within an instrument. So a synth might have hundreds of parameters, and in fact I could automate pretty much all of those parameters, depending on the plugin, and most of them these days allow you to automate pretty much everything. I could automate a whole load of different parameters which change throughout the track, or through a section of a track, or just over a few beats, um, to allow you to do some really complex tonal manipulation. So. In essence, it allows you to do lots and lots of different things, control parameters in Cubase, tonal parameters that are part of the mixer or the plugins, which is separate from the MIDI events or the audio events. So you can see here that automation is a very, very powerful tool. And in fact, you can go very, very deep in terms of some of the things you can do with automation. 
uh, and there's some very complex controls including the automation panel that allow you to do stuff on a much more complex level. Um, but it's most basic, it allows you to create a dynamic mix, it allows you to do something that um, in, the, in the sort of 1970s, 1960s and further back you would have needed lots of people on the mixing desk to actually do, to do that kind of, kind of mix. It now allows you to do it and audition it and try out lots of interesting things. So very powerful tool, something worth getting to grips with and starting off simply and then moving up to some more complex tasks.